I'm Graham from Edgeburn, and today we're talking to Philip and Melania Bear from Offizen, and we're going to be talking about what they learned in Silicon Valley and how they use it in South Africa. You guys came back from Silicon Valley, you're in South Africa, um, and you started Offizen. Why start Offizen when you come back to South Africa, which is quite a bit different to Journey? So I think also why the idea for Offizen? Why take this business model, which was, as far as I'm aware, a bit different to your previous one? Mm. Yeah, it's very different. I mean, I, I definitely wouldn't have thought like, hey, start a recruitment firm. That's like a great thing to do. Like, yeah. I didn't really like, like recruitment firms. It was like a, it kind of felt like a kind of a strange industry. But we like, I'm very, very interested in people building things. Mm. Uh, like that, that matters. Like that's what we do. The whole Faraday mission was like, find a way for South Africans to build stuff, build tech, build companies, like the same businesses. And um, so, so, so the one thing we sort of, I started realizing is that that's like one approach is kind of incubation model or whatever, trying to tell people to start us. But a lot of product, most product, 99% of product is, does not get built as a like a new startup. Hmm. Uh, there's like most good developers are not starting a new startup. They're working somewhere. And there are a lot of companies with like really cool problems. And that matchup isn't great. Uh, like I mean, we knew from our friends, like finding cool stuff to work on is hard, even though there's a lot of cool stuff to work on. Um, companies really, really want good developers yep. and good developers aren't necessarily so it's sort of like I guess a, the solution as in a recruitment company was completely alien to us but the problem was incredibly known how's the growth been um, now having to use your own money uh, versus someone else I mean so uh, we've been growing at um, between 8 and 10% weekly compounded since December last year. Mm. That's like many, many weeks at a very, very high growth rate. Yes. I, 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 the stuff that breaks is not like lack of money. Up to now it hasn't been. Um, I do think the lack of money keeps you a bit more honest. Mm. Uh, like you, you, you can't paint over some problems by just paying for it. So, so that part I like. I liked it more when it was just so kind of us on the line. Uh, and we could just be cheap. But once you have a larger team, mm. then there's sort of a, a responsibility thing there. You you kind of want to be solid on. That I think is very different from just like kind of losing money and having an uncomfortable time is one thing. Like impacting other people's lives is a very different kind of problem. Like I'm happy with the one, I'm not so happy with the other. Yeah. Probably one of the biggest questions is what differences can you see between Silicon Valley and the Silicon Cave? I think there are an insane number of opportunities in South Africa. Yeah. Uh, I think primarily, like one, one huge thing is this lack of competition. So as South Africans, we, uh, we generally don't think in terms of competition. So um, when we think, when, you know, there's local startup doing something, they're going to uh, succeed or fail generally based on their own execution. There's also some interesting things with regard to um, sort of talent in yep. South Africa versus Silicon Valley. So I think on, on the developer side, it's, it's relatively equal in that we have world-class developers here. Mm. But I think for, uh, in the, in, at least in the startup or sort of technology space, mm. uh, our marketing and sales and operations, um, talent is relatively immature compared to there. We have to hack stuff a lot more here, I think, mm. it, which is fun, and, but very different. So, so I've also noticed Silicon Valley guys who come here tend to, sh to struggle a bit because it's not as easy as just kind of opening a Rolodex and figuring out what the right person mm. is to get for this phase. There is no answer. Yeah. You can't just... Uh, kind of re read the playbook you have to sort of create it so with everything you've learned in Silicon Valley what advice would you give a startup in Cape Town I have a business model that would probably be number one thing like that meme from Silicon Valley is probably a bad meme like, I'm yeah. having made the mistakes so I'm happy to say it because I've made the mistakes yes. so many times now. the meme that you can kind of float without a business model for a while it works there I, it's not a good if you want to uh, work really hard and have a chance at like succeeding financially or, or impact or anything like mm -hmm. that, have a business model early on. And that's probably like the one, the one scary mm -hmm. lie, if you will, that gets transplanted from Silicon Valley. It's probably only true there and a few other places in the world. That would be, I think, be my one thing. Yeah. And it's really hard, so people, it's really nice to believe you don't need it. But I think outside of Silicon Valley, not having a business model on day one with like say unit economics, mm. you're probably messing up your own time. You can even get funding, you can go through the whole loop, but four years down the line, you, you'll lose, probably. Well, thank you very much for watching. As always, please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, SoundCloud, Google+, and everything else out there. A huge thank you to Philip and Milan. And be sure to check out offizen.co.za? Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. And a huge thank you as well to the Bandwidth Barn in Woodstock for allowing us to film here today.